This is Larry Hayward. I am pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church in Alexandria, Virginia, and I welcome you to this morning devotional. Last Thursday, I was able to do what I am rarely able to do. That is to take the better part of a day at home, shut the world out, and read. I had received a shipment of books I had ordered, and I read the introduction or first and first chapter or so to each book. It's a luxury that many people in the world don't have, and one I have to fight the distractions of the world myself in order to get. But Thursday, I was able to do so with a measure of success. I'm reading a 750-page book by Charles Taylor called The Secular Age, in which this esteemed philosopher gives an account of how over the past several hundred years, it has become an option for most people, at least in North America, not to believe in God and not to orient our lives with the assumption that God is watching. I'm reading a much shorter book by another philosopher named Michael Sandel entitled The Tyranny of Merit, in which he traces how the belief that we can all succeed if we work hard enough produces great pressure and anxiety on us, but also contributes to inequality worldwide, because the starting line is simply not equal for everyone and ultimately makes it difficult for us to have an adequate sense of the common good. I'm reading another short book, Breaking Bread with the Dead, by a literature professor at Baylor named Alan Jacobs in which he argues and presents examples of how reading books from across the centuries, what he called old books, can sufficiently lift us out of the present that we can find a tranquil mind and become wiser as we return to the present and seek to live responsibly in it. So ironically, taking these books in reverse order, I'm taking a day off to read a book about reading, to read a book that discusses the anxiety that comes when we fear we might not be producing enough, including on our days off, and to read a book about how the God to whom I have devoted my working life and my vocation is no longer universally assumed to exist. Talk about self-punishment. But I ended the day as I've ended many days lately, reading a short story by Chekhov, the 19th century Russian physician and writer who invented the genre of the short story. It was a story about two orphaned Russian peasant children who hook up one day with the town drunk for what turns out to be a long walk in the countryside. The three of them discover all kinds of plants and animals. They marvel at the cloudburst of thunder and the smell of rain. They manage to eat a morsel of bread together. At the end of the day, the children crawl into a bed of hay in a barn so that they can have some shelter for sleep. The town drunk wanders off to the tavern, but in the middle of the night, he finds his way to the haystack in the barn and places under the head of each child a clump of bread for in the morning. It is a warm act of human kindness in a world without much kindness for these children or for the town drunk. Then when I awoke the next day to find an op-ed in the New York Times by Marilyn Robinson, as abler a chronicler of human beauty as Chekhov. She writes, it is often said that America is an idea stated definitively in early documents left to us by a coterie of men seemingly too compromised to have come up with such glorious language. 
human ideas, human beings are sacred, therefore equal. We are asked to see one another in the light of a singular inalienable worth that would make a family of us if we let it. We are sacred and therefore equal. Whether we're born into a society that nurtures belief in God or one that constantly reminds us that we have the choice not to believe. We are sacred and therefore equal, whether we start behind in the race toward meritorious achievement, or whether we have so much support along the way that we are anxious our achievements may not be fully our own accomplishments. We are sacred and therefore equal, whether we find wisdom and tranquility through old books or through any books at all. We are sacred and therefore equal, whether we are the town drunk opening up the world of nature to two orphan children and giving them bread for the morn, or whether we are children receiving bread from one no one else would think capable of giving it. Robinson concludes by saying the idea that we are sacred and therefore equal is a progressive force, constantly and necessarily exposing our failures while showing us new paths forward. I hope that we will never lose this idea that we are sacred and therefore equal, and that we will continue to let it make a family of us. Amen.